of all, good evening, everyone here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, you know, first of all, I want to, you know, for people who have not read the book uh, or don't know about um, the my my son's cancer, uh, I'll give you a bit of a lowdown on what happened in 2014. Um, my son was at that time uh, three years, uh, ten months, and he was. Uh, he was diagnosed with uh, a condition called Wilms tumor. It's a very rare case of kidney cancer. It happens to a very small percentage of kids worldwide. And my son happened to be the part of that unfortunate percentage of kids. Um, this uh, discovery of this cancer, uh, the first uh, very bizarre symptoms were over a, a very usual brunch at uh, a five-star restaurant in Mumbai when we had come back from uh, um, a New Year trip in January. and. Um, there was no accompanying fever, there was no vomiting, there was no discomfort that my son had. He was extremely ill. He's a very, very positive, very, very energetic kid. And uh, that day he happened to pass blood uh, uh, in his urine. And we as parents obviously freaked out. Uh, we took him to uh, the nearest hospital. That's where we all get treated. That's in Khar Hinduja. And uh, his pediatrician, Dr. Ajit, there uh, did the tests and we found uh, a nine centimeter tumor that was growing on top of his left kidney. And um, you know, for any parent, <coughs> and I'll speak for ourselves, <coughs> for me and my wife, uh, when we heard the news, um, it's like the, the ground beneath our feet had been ripped off. Um, cancer, the perception of cancer uh, for a lay person like me, and I consider myself as a lay person because with education, with you know, even staying in Mumbai, you've you've had you've heard of people get cancer, but you don't actually go to the depths of it unless you have someone close to you uh, diagnosed with the disease. Uh, my perception of cancer was this monster that is going to take my son's life uh, because of a lot of things. You know, maybe the way it's been projected in the media, maybe the way a lot of just the general vibe of what cancer has done worldwide. It has overtaken heart disease over the past decade. It's very prevalent uh, in our country, in uh, rural and in because of urbanization in most of the places. And you're constantly hearing about deaths related to cancer. And that was my you know, prime fear at that point of time, that this is going to take my son's life. The perception changed uh, when I started informing myself when I started reading up a lot about cancer and demystifying a lot of things about this dreaded disease. I realized that 70 to almost 95 percent in my son's case the prognosis is extremely good. Wilms tumor has one of the best prognosis as far as cancer goes. Uh, it's highly treatable and that was very heartening for me to know. But I, that was a revelation that happened over the course of two months after reading. So I had an agonizing two months. and. Um, but still, there's no way of encompassing that in words or trying to explain what a parent goes through. Uh, it's, it's worse than being confronted with your own mortality, uh, hearing that your three-year-old son has got cancer. And uh, our lives have changed ever since, you know, we've started living a very new kind of normal. You make peace with the cancer in a way. It's this fact in the house. It's there in conversations that wasn't there. You can't wish it away. And uh, your, your perception changes and, and then you have to fight the good fight against this disease and, and make sure you, you, know, you don't let it get the better of you or your family. And, and, and that's exactly what we did. Yeah, Imran, and I think I just uh, read through the book and you have constantly mentioned a positive message there. I mean, Superman. We, uh, yeah, we use yeah. the, the analogy yeah, of uh, yeah. superheroes so, in the book. So, yes. so I think, uh, do you wish that in some ways the media should, or the general uh, public, should have more positive news coming out? Because as I always tell my patients, you know, a lot of times, you know, people proudly say that I've got an angioplasty done at a seven star hospital. But nobody says that I've got cancer treated at an XYZ place. So do you think that kind of positive news should come out more people I just like hope, uh, I just wish positive news sold as much as bad news <laughs> is. is. That's the unfortunate <laughs> part. But uh, yes, I mean, there's also projections in the media that bring about positive effects of cancer. But there's no running away from the fact that it is the major killer worldwide today. So there is this dread that, you know, there is this underlying feeling that what if, and 
another reason is when you have something like a diabetes or a heart, you deal with it, you have terms that you are cons constantly been th have been thrown towards you, which is five years survival. Your fight doesn't end after your chemotherapy or radiation. It is another psychological problem you go through for five years. We're still dealing with it. The, my son is on two and a half years now, which is he's, he's out of the red right now. But uh, there are a lot of factors uh, with cancer that actually add up uh, the fear syndrome that we all have when we hear uh, about cancer. So Manoj, I think that's a message that probably I think we should carry, that media needs some good news as well as bad news. <laughs> the media doesn't look at news as good news or bad news. Media looks at news as news. So it's a very subjective thing. One day, I would hope that we have some of these physicians here today because this is a great forum as well. Right? We've been here all day discussing on call. What, what a family goes through when, uh, when, a, when a person in the family is diagnosed with cancer. So what, what do you think is this impact on, on the life where of, of a family once a cancer is diagnosed? As regards the cost, as regards the anxiety, what, and how, do, how does the healthcare worker you know, sort of reduce this? What would you like to see the healthcare worker doing to reduce this? Well, first of all, I'd like to speak personally about our experience and uh, the psychological impact of uh, you know, our son being diagnosed with this cancer. Um, first and foremost, you know, as parents, you go through a variety of emotions, um, ranging from anger, uh, guilt, sadness. Guilt because, you know, at that age, you're making most of the choices for your kid, and you feel that maybe it's something that you did wrong. Maybe uh, you fed the kid something wrong. There was something wrong with the nutrition, and uh, that has a very, very deep psychological impact. Uh, that had a, a deep impact on us. Um, when we heard the news, obviously it was the, the worst part. And post that, every day was like a new hurdle. Uh, there was post that the surgery, which we had, which was the, the four longest hours of our lives, uh, having uh, the tumor removed. And we, we lost the kidney also, because that's generally how you deal with uh, a case where it is nine centimeters. And post that, there was the pathology report coming in, which took us, you know, which took five to seven days, which is again the five longest days of my life because then, you know, there's the unfavorable, favorable hist uh, histology, there's uh, the staging, which was all way new to us. Thankfully, he was on a, on a second stage, which made uh, the, the treatment and the prognosis much better. Um, Post that, we uh, flew our son to Canada, uh, to Toronto, to sick kids. Uh, it's one of the top, uh, top pediatric hospitals. And there was uh, one of the main reasons that we did this is because of we were trying to attend, apart from the physical aspect and the medical intervention, uh, there's a psychological impact that all this has on us as a family unit and on our son. And we didn't want him to change in any way that emotionally scars a kid. It definitely has emotionally scarred us. <laughs> Kids can't talk about it. But uh, that's something that we, I guess, lack uh, in our country, is the dealing with the psychological um, aspect of cancer. Talking about it, parents talking about it. Um, trying to make the kid understand what the issue at hand is. Because it's extremely complex. Um, when my son was flown in, you know, obviously there was great care in, in, in Hinduja and he got the best treatment there. And, but there was still, because of the surgery, you know, there was a psychological impact. And when he went there, his blood pressure shot up uh, in the hospital in Canada. And they, they were equipped in dealing with that psychological uh, aspect and calming him down. Uh, ditto for us, because we also had someone to speak to through the entire incident. Um, Another psychological impact was, you know, we used to have, actually, we used to have nightmares. I came back to Bombay. I, I didn't get sleep. I, I was working here. I came back from my shoot after a month from there. I left my wife and my son when he was being treated there. And I used to get all of one hour of sleep uh, in the night. And it was hell for me. But that's something that I guess every parent has to deal with. And eventually, I don't even know if 
I need, I need to, I need counseling after this. So I, I really need, I feel that India needs more units in hospitals. I think they are starting that right now. It's in the infancy. They have a field abroad, which is psychosocial oncology, which deals with, uh, you know, attending to the counseling sessions for parents and for, uh, even for youngsters. So it has had a deep psychological impact. Some, something that I fully don't understand yet. I don't know the psychological impact that it's had. And as far as the cost goes, of course, you know, my family could deal with it, but there is this huge problem, surmounting problem that you see in real India, in rural India, because I've got so much of fan mail on Twitter and on my mail after the book was written, that generally the cases are, there's a late diagnosis, there's no, you know, there's no awareness there, there's illiteracy, uh, they don't understand what cancer is, there are, there are there's social stigmas there. And uh, when they find the cancer, it is so expensive that uh, it's untreatable and they can't do it at, the, at that income group. But now I believe there's metronomics, metronomics which has started off in, in India, which is again making it extremely uh, um, approachable, uh, a few hundred rupees for a treatment of in an entire month, which is uh, a paradigm shift. And you know, uh, <clears throat> I think uh, it's really set the standard for India and uh, the costing here. But yeah, costing is again a key issue for that income group, which needs to be attended to. Yeah, definitely. I think psychological impact is something that uh, we often discount as doctors. I mean, as doctors, we tend to concentrate on the disease. We tend to concentrate on curing the patient physically. So holistic care is something that is required and taking inspiration from what TMH uh, has. TMH does have a good apparatus as far as uh, support is concerned. Uh, setting up cancer care groups and that is what we have replicated in Fortis Mulund. Uh, Dr. Badwe sir, do you think we should have more of these uh, counselors uh, take up these messages? Uh, when they take up ads, for example, now we are seeing, I'm sorry for being blunt, but pan masala, which is supposed to be as, as dangerous as... Everybody takes upon himself to endorse a pan masala. He's definitely being very ignorant. When you face the situation firsthand, uh, you realize that these are the things that you cannot touch, uh, let alone be a role model and promote them uh, on, on TV and in other media. And, um, you know, as, as an actor, you do have a social responsibility, but what, where does the ignorance, how, how do you kind of correct that? Because till uh, my son didn't have cancer, I didn't realize most of the, uh, the hurdles that I had to cross in, in, in that situation. There, for example, um, cancer is a very minuscule percentage is genetic. And I realized that, you know, the lifestyle has a huge part to play um, in, in cancer and fighting it. So there were, two options left to us, either we treat the cancer momentarily or you nip it in the bud. How do you do that? Uh, you get down to actually making, you know, huge lifestyle changes. Uh, for example, you know, sleeping, uh, handling stress, uh, your diet, a lot of dietary things that are promoted by, uh, by celebrities, they still don't know that that, that is harmful. Um, Kerala has started a very good thing, the fat tax. Which, is, which has been started, which I tweeted yesterday and felt that it should be inculcated in all states. And as far as cigarette smoking, uh, you know, uh, as, as far as smoking goes, I feel, forget about taxing, it should be banned. Um, you know, f we know that back in the 80s and the 70s, there was this huge problem with the tobacco lobby where there was not enough evidence to prove that tobacco was actually causing lung cancer. And this debate went along for the longest time and I think the last Marlboro ad was uh, promoted in 1990. And after that, there was this thing on packages saying that it is injurious to health. Who is going to tell people, uh, you know, the, the system is not telling people that fast food joints, um, your, uh, your, your burgers, your, your juices, all that is actually adding up. There are carcinogens out there. Who's going to inform people about all those things? So there's a lot of things that the system needs to put forth and say that these are harmful and this is cancerous. So th that, that is not even there in our consciousness. That is not there in our awareness. Forget about in the rural areas. It's not there in education, in, you know, educated sections in Mumbai. We don't know about it. Um, after reading up everything, I've stopped sugar completely in my house 
because uh, just like there was a ban on tobacco, very well soon enough, the next decade, you're going to know that sugar is one of the most toxic substances. I'd rather have a cigarette than have sugar, refined sugar. So these things need to come out in public domain and people need to know about it, uh, which people unfortunately don't know and celebrities don't know. That's why they go ahead and probably promote a, a, a pop soda. I won't do that because I know what it does to the body. Uh, I know firsthand from my son's experience and, about, uh, and after reading about all of this. So. That's, that's really heartening, uh, heartening yes, to hear that. Really, talking yeah. about sugar, last year I had one symposium on sugar symposium for three hours. And that was a really revelation that how sugar is talking. Ten years down the line, how do you see India? Well, first of all, I, I wish and hope uh, there are more pediatric facilities here because as far as uh, when we had researched when my son was being treated, uh, there's a dearth of pediatric doctors in India. Uh, most of the kids are being treated by adult oncologists. So, uh, and like doctor said, there is a pediatric facility coming up in Mumbai and hopefully in other states and other cities, which is a very imperative when it comes to treating little kids. And of course, the, you know, healthcare systems are burdened. I hope there is some kind of provision made to, to give satisfactory measures, you know, funding to those patients that come from small towns and to support them. The main cause over there for some mounting expenses, like I've heard, is uh, late diagnosis, which uh, when, when it reaches that stage, it becomes very hard for them to kind of uh, pay up and then uh, they eventually drop out of treatment. And one thing that I also realized when I went abroad uh, for, for the treatment of my son, there isn't much emphasis in the medical world on the lifestyle issues of cancer. Uh, everyone is going down the approach of you got a problem, pop a pill. Yeah. Uh, we have to make sure we educate people and make them aware on how do you address the causative nature of cancer. Why does it happen in the first place? If it is a lifestyle issue, what can we do in our lives? And we've seen, you know, I've spoken to so many doctors in Mumbai. Uh, kids are, are pouring in in the last two decades, in the last decade. What are we doing? What has what, what drastically gone wrong with the water we drink, with the food we eat, with the radiation uh, levels? What is going wrong and how do we address that? And the system needs to address that. So, so, so these are the things that have to be addressed by the medical world. Uh, that, so that at least, you know, you don't, you don't allow it to happen in the first place. Let's eradicate cancer and nip it in the bud. You know, instead of, of course, treatment options are very, very important, but let's make sure you at least bring in that awareness. Then, of course, if people know that uh, smoking a cigarette will give them cancer and they, they choose to do it, then, you know, they're puffing the life away. But at least, you know, as far as kids go, uh, that's the choice you make for them. So it's very important for parents also to kind of uh, be educated and uh, for the government to do that. Vinash, sir, will have his response regarding the vision. I think, uh, as Rajan said, if the federal support and the government support increases, I'm sure the infrastructure for this will definitely grow. Current 1.3% GDP has to go to at least 2 or 3. Then I'm sure the, all this will probably be better. But I think more, I feel, is what is important for is that there should be more awareness in the public about understanding a cancer and living with it and fighting against it. I think today people should realize